In Rust, I found that I haven't really missed having like a true debugger where I can step through the code and like investigate what each variable is uh, as I'm, I, you know, as I'm writing and, and running it. Um, like there's been a couple times where that would have been nice, but for the most part, I've actually gotten really far with using just like printing things out to the screen uh, or rather to standard out or standard error. Now there's a couple of different ways to do this. And some of the ways are for interacting and like leaving messages or good feedback to our users. And some of them are for just helping ourselves uh, in the case that like, you know, something we just want to know what something is. Uh, so let's take a look at what options we have. Uh, now there's three options right off the bat that I turn to. And um, those are the ones I'm going to show you here. There's, there's obviously more options to get things out to the terminal, uh, but uh, I, I just didn't, never really pull them out. So to begin with, um, and probably the one that like is um, you might see the most inside of a, a source code is a print line. So this is a macro that was defined by Rust essentially that we can then just use. And it's in the prelude, which means we don't need to like pull it in. We don't need to have a use statement for it. So let's say we have a variable. So let, um, let, let's say like um, a, a, like a cat uh, is still be. Um, and I want to then print out what this cat is. We can just do print line. Uh, the bang is for that macro. If you don't do the bang, it will not work for us. And now I can't just say cat like that uh, because that's not how print line works. That's going to yell at us. So print line is actually very much like like print lines were from other languages where we have a string and then we can put cat in here and we have to say exactly where it's going to go. And in this case, that's done through open and closed curly brackets. So if I say uh, the cat's name is, this is what's going to be printed out. The cat's name is, and then Zilby. So I run this. There we go. We can see the output of that print line statement. Uh, it's important to note that print line goes to standard out. If we want to print to standard error, so let's say that uh, that the cat is actually an option, and uh, so let's do like a sum with uh, Zilby inside. Um, at this point, I mean, I can still actually well, I can't actually print this out anymore because. Um, Options don't, you know, do display. Uh, now I could like maybe wrap it inside of a struct and implement display myself and then just, you know, do handle that. Or we can do colon question mark, which now gives us the debug. So it's, hey, does, does option implement a debug display? And it does. So I can still run this and everything is sort of like as we expected. We can now have the cat's name is some Zilby. Now, if I want to print to standard error, so let's say I'm handling like an error and I want to like then print out some kind of message, uh, there is an e print line that is exactly the same as print line, except it prints to standard error instead of standard out. So if you have like a bunch of messages going to standard out, and then you're redirecting standard out to one file and standard error to another file, or maybe like a log file. Um, this is a great way to sort of like keep things separate so you can look at the errors, you know, when they happen. Um, now, finally, let's say that uh, you want to be able to debug these things, but you don't want to have to constantly do, remember to put in these like, you know, colon question marks, or you want to remember that it's coming from this variable cat, um, or even what line this is coming from uh, in their code, there is a, a macro that was added in called debug, so dbg bang, and then you can just put whatever you want in here. Do you wanna just take a look at what cat is? Well, here you go. Let's take a look at what cat is. If we run this, we'll actually see, okay, on line five, cat is this. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, do notice that I can 
I can give it cat. I can give it a reference to cat. Um, it'll be fine. Uh, debug actually does return something. So if I just say, you know, whatever this is, something equals, we'll actually see that it returns whatever was passed into it. Uh, so that's like for ownership purposes. If I can't, for example, give it a reference to that, uh, then I can just sort of like shout out cat again to make sure, hey, I didn't like delete cat. I haven't like, it's not gonna be gone after this line. Uh, and that's something to be aware of if you're using it inside of a function, especially if it's the last line of a function and you don't want it to auto return something, then uh, be sure to give it that semicolon and uh, just be aware that it can take ownership um, and but it also returns that thing if you really need to give it you know ownership anyways with those three methods i found not really that much need for a like an actual inline debugger i can just sort of inspect what is inside of any of my variables at any one time and then i'm i'm good to go sometimes with a debug i also pair this with a panic um, in order to just crash as soon as it reaches this line. Um, that way I'm like, don't have to, if I'm running through like a game, I don't have to like manually quit it myself. I just want to see what was in the terminal at this time. And we can see, okay, it's right here. It's right above where the panic, uh, uh, error is. Anyways, I'm hoping this is helpful and, uh, and debugging is something that you can do now. I will see you in the next video. Bye.